All right, from energy to foreign policy, Biden's endless stream of failures has exacerbated this crisis in Israel. His decision to drain our strategic petroleum reserve to its lowest levels in decades, in part because he wanted to drop the price of gas in the lead up to the 2022 election because of his energy pro uh, policies that caused the spike in interest in gas by artificially reducing the world's supply of oil. Now, this co could cause a massive problem for this country for many years to come. We're now having estimates that say we would have less than 20 days worth of petroleum if, God forbid, an emergency arose in this country. That is reckless and irresponsible. And meanwhile, Republicans are pushing back on the administration's foreign policy failures. Missouri Senator Josh Hawley calling for all funding for Ukraine to be immediately redirected to Israel. Here with reaction, Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton. Senator, all I hear from Joe Biden is Ukraine, 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 you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. Europe has not stepped up and Joe has put handcuffs on the Ukrainians and their ability to take MiGs from Poland, their ability to use cluster bombs, their, their ability to fight a war to actually win it. Why would we spend another penny if that's, if that's how it's going to roll? Yeah, Sean, like you, I have always supported Ukraine, but I've never supported Joe Biden's Ukraine policy because, as you said, he's pussyfooted around from the very beginning of that war, not allowing Ukraine to fight it to win it. I worry that's the direction we'll ultimately head in Israel as well. There's a well-worn pattern when Israel has to defend itself and make war on terrorist groups like Hezbollah and Hamas in 2006, in 2012, 2014, 2021. Barack Obama and Joe Biden, after a number of days, when the left wing of their party begins to demand ceasefires and restraints, put pressure on Israel's government. That is what we cannot do this time. This is completely different from past attacks on Israel. Israel needs the time and the freedom of action necessary to completely destroy Hamas, not just a terrorist group, but a governing entity and a social movement. And it's imperative that Joe Biden not begin to put pressure on Israel when Palestinian civilian casualties are staged for CNN and Al Jazeera and New York Times, when it's really Hamas using those civilians as human shields. You know, uh, I, I'd like to know what role should America have in aiding and abetting and helping Israel here in your view? Well, Sean, there's a couple things I didn't hear in Joe Biden's speech today. One, I didn't hear the word Iran. It emboldens Iran when President Biden refuses to even speak. Why, why its do name. you think that is, Second, Senator? I didn't hear. Um, I think that. President Biden, like President Obama before him, has a grand plan for the Middle East and it involves elevating Iran as a kind of balancing power against Israel and our partners in places like Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. And I think it foreshadows that well-worn path that I talked about earlier that President Biden expects in a few weeks or a month or so to begin to call for restraint uh, or proportionality from Israel. Uh, as opposed to giving Israel the time and the freedom of action it needs to totally destroy Hamas. So they're trying to avoid upsetting their broader policy as opposed to doing what they should, which is reversing their Iran policy, immediately halting that $6 billion payment, stopping all oil shipment out of Iran that goes directly to China in many cases. They need to totally reverse course, like say Jimmy Carter did after three failed years when you had the revolution in Iran and Soviet Russia invading Afghanistan. Unfortunately, I don't expect that from President Biden. Isn't that the most basic thing that Joe Biden would say they're not getting the six billion dollars because of their involvement and their support of terrorism worldwide? And why would Joe have made that deal in the first place? And why does Joe, um, you know, we, we had a situation under President Trump where we had an, an alliance that I never thought I'd see in our lifetime. And that was the U.S. and Israel and Jordan and Egypt and the Saudis and the Emirates, they were involved, all involved together. Intelligence sharing was widespread, all to, to battle against Iranian hegemony in the region and the possibility of facing one day a nuclear armed Iran. Why isn't Joe on that side? Well, again, it goes back to the Obama-Biden era whenever they're trying to 
uh, elevate Iran and, and try to create a new kind of balance of power in the Middle East so we could alienate our friends in Israel and make new friends in places like Iran. I, I think the deep folly and danger of that ideological vision was exposed this weekend because Hamas is nothing but a proxy force for Iran. Um, but yeah, the $6 billion is a good example. You have Jake Sullivan and Tony Blinken out there saying not a dollar of it has been spent. It couldn't have been involved in this attack. Well, if not a dollar has been spent, it should be very easy to halt the transfer of that money to Iran. And I know that your colleague, Senator Marsha Blackburn, has put forward a bill to do just that. I hope, I hope uh, maybe you can get a couple of Democratic senators. Oh, I don't know. Chuck Schumer, are you paying attention uh, to support that effort? I would like to think so. But Chuck is my senator. I get nothing out of him. I'm actually like a political orphan. Not one politician in New York will talk to me. Uh, anyway, Senator, good to, good to have you on the program. Thank you.